Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know it's such a big room <laughs> for a small gathering, but I think it's more conducive than last time. I'm uh, Michael Bucherku. I'm the uh, spokesperson for the special monitoring mission to Ukraine, and I'm very honored uh, to have uh, with us Ambassador Apakan, our chief monitor. Uh, as you know, this is the second time um, Ambassador has been reporting to the Permanent Council. Um, he's also been uh, engaged in very many bilaterals with various uh, participating states. A um, number of issues have come up, which he'll get into in his press statement. Uh, as I'm sure you know, the extension of the, the mission, the conditions on the ground. So without uh, further ado, Ambassador Apakan, and then we'll take some questions as well. Please, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon. It's nice to meet you again in Vienna on the occasion of permanent council meeting. It's uh, now SMM, Special Monitoring Mission, is operating in Ukraine during the last three months time. And we maintain a robust presence throughout Ukraine. We have nearly 10 teams in different uh, regions of the country and we have also a robust presence. We are on the ground in both Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts. In response to the security situation changing, ever-changing security situation during the last particularly two months time, we have had reconfigure our teams. Currently, we have about 250 monitors from over 40 countries, as I've said, based in 10 states. In Donetsk, we have resumed daily patrols. On Monday, a team reached Mariupol, Mariupol and today a team was dispatched to Slavians. On Tuesday, a team from the north accessed to Slavians for six hours and met with the acting mayor, among others. SMM was the first international organization to come to Slavians since it became accessible on 5th of July. And we remain the only international organization there for the moment. The safety and security of our colleagues is our number one concern. We also need to upgrade our technical capability to monitor. Owing to the nature of the mission and its mandate and reporting tasks, the mission in it inevitably takes risks. Although comprehensive monitoring in those two oblasts is not possible in a period of conflict like this, especially in hot spots, we continue to be present in Eastern Ukraine. We look forward to the day soon when we can resume our full activities in Eastern Ukraine. But for that to happen, we need a number of improvements. We need a period of tranquility, a period which will enable the country to, to cooperate and uh, to reconcile. We need weapons to disappear. We need checkpoints to disappear. On the part of SMM, we also need freedom of movement. We hope that the escalation continues in the east of Ukraine. We look forward to the resumption of peace consultations, though any agreement should have uh, as few imperfections as possible. People want to speak to us. We are reaching to them. As we are finding out day after day now in Slavyansk, in Kramatuk, in Donetsk, in Luhansk as a whole. 
We are there to establish the facts and to report. Also to facilitate dialogue and to reach the people. Now people know us. We have presently seen as a reliable and neutral interlocutor. We are operating in Ukraine with the consent of 57 participating countries. We are also there at the invitation of the Ukrainian government. We want to be helpful to the normalization of the country and we want to be helpful to the people of Ukraine. We have adapted ourselves from a purely civilian situation in some parts of the country, armed conflict. But we do believe that these days will be over soon and the whole country will move into a normalization process. In that context, we do believe that Berlin Declaration of 2 July is a step in the right direction. We also believe that President Prochenko's peace plan provides a stable roadmap for the country. And finally, I should say that we will be ready to assume new responsibilities if the permanent council will agree on it. In line with our mandate. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. Uh, would, are there any questions? Anyone? how the situation is on the ground. Um, but do you see a clear schedule? Like, is there anything like, how, how is the whole um, the speaking to, to the rebels over there going on? Are there any clear statements? Are they trying to cooperate? Um, are they maybe divided in between the young groups? Do you want me to? How, how, are the, how are the consultations with the rebel groups and with the armed groups going on and what, what are we hearing from them? Well, uh, you know, the, the contact group carried out uh, contacts with the parties concerned and the, they have had, uh, they had a meeting in Donetsk and it's really, uh, their effort was valuable in realizing the ceasefire, which has been declared uh, by President Prochenko. Again, we do believe that contact group would play a key role in establishing a mutually agreed ceasefire, a sustainable ceasefire uh, in the region that would enable uh, reconciliation and that would also uh, give a way uh, to, to the normalization process in those parts of the country. And I think that will also uh, kick off to national dialogue and reconciliation. This is our expectation. So the work of contact group is important it's also important for us. We need also safe and secure environment. When the ceasefire is, uh, is achieved, this will give us an, uh, an opportunity uh, to perform our full functions in the region. Particularly in those two oblasts, as I have said earlier, we are covering only some parts of the regions, not the whole region. But this is the reason our work and ceasefire is also interlinked. But what we need is not a condition, it's not a linkage. We need safety and security for our people in operating fully in these uh, two oblasts uh, with our teams. 
it is a requirement. I understand, of course, there are uh, different uh, reactions on different groups, uh, but what I would like to say, the impression which our teams, the, the early impressions which they have got from their visit to Slavians and to some parts of Kramatorsk, I mean, the situation is uh, sensitive, but in the final analysis, we even uh, reported it back to the uh, participating states that people are looking for peace. In the final analysis, they need peace. Well, we hope that uh, our, our, our experience with kidnapping came to an end. And, uh, but there is a kidnapping question. Uh, you know, kidnap people in the region. And I hope this uh, ceasefire and reconciliation will also find out a way, a way out to this problem. But newly, I didn't uh, hear any new kidnapping uh, event. Thank you. Thank you, Andrei Zolotov, Ria Novosti. Ambassador, when can uh, the mission reach the capacity of 500 people, which has been set as a goal? When can we reach the capacity of 500 people? You know, be sure that uh, because of these hostage issues and security environment, we have somewhat uh, suspended or slowed down, you know, the expansion uh, process of the team. So we are about uh, 250. Be sure that in the uh, upcoming days, we need skilled and trained people from the participating states in order to increase our number. I could say that within one or two months' time, it is within reach to increase our capacity. Uh, Michael Sherbuk of Russian News Agency, Tatas. Um, uh, there were talks about sending uh, monitors to the border stations, two border stations between Russia and Ukraine. Um, how far did you get in the discussions? Is there some decisions on it? Uh, how can be uh, the monitors placed? How much would you need to be placed there? And is there some permanent need to monitor this to border? two border stations between Ukraine and Russia. How much resources do we need to do that? What is the situation like that? Of course, this is very much uh, also, you know, we are looking for a new tasking, new tasking. The task should be given to us. So it has to be clear and well defined. It's up to headquarters in Vienna. We are carrying out our preparations, but the modalities of this operation have to be discussed in Vienna and agreed uh, with the concerned parties. Thank you. My name is Albert Otzi with PPA, Chairman Price Agency. Um, what would you say are the, achieve, are, are the achievements, has, has the, the OSC mission achieved anything? 
so far in, or, or asked in a different way if the OEC mission hadn't been there over the past months, would have, uh, have anything been different in terms of the conflict? Yes. I think our original, if you look at our original tasking, we have been tasked by monitoring human rights, basic freedoms, minority rights, and related rights and to establish facts and report thereon. Secondly, we have been asked to carry out dialogue and facilitation. Thirdly, we have been asked to reach to the people. If I'll speak in terms of this original mandate, still we, we stick to this mandate. We are reporting and we are establishing the facts and we are present. To be present there means to reach to, to all parties concerned, to speak to the people. People speak to us. So our reports are an accurate, uh, you know, accurate uh, compilation of the realities in different parts of the country. If you go to our daily, weekly, and spot reports, you will see that there are pertinent observations with regard to the current situation in different parts of the country, and also some, some on-the-spot observations with some emerging new situations. We have been there as a monitoring team. We, were not a, we are not a peacekeeping force. But despite ever-changing security environment, I should tell you that in Donetsk, in Slavyansk, and in Luhansk, we have gone between the parties concerned and achieved partial truces, partial ceasefires, in order to be helpful to the repairment of electricity system in Slavyansk, in order to be helpful to the repairment of water system in Donetsk, and in Luhansk, we have been helpful to the parties to exchange their dead bodies. So what I'm trying to say, we, in addition to our reporting function, we are doing dialogue, presentation, and good offices in different parts of the country. And I should share my observation with you that there's a trust from all sides concerned to SMN. This is increasing. And if I could add to that, um, sorry, the, um, it, as the ambassador noted, we're the first uh, international organization on the ground in Slavyansk since it's opened up. And uh, this week alone, we've issued uh, two, I think maybe even three spot reports. Although those spot reports are not made public, we do try to share what we can with the media to give you an idea of the situation on the ground there. So we have more information on Slavyansk later, if you like. And during this week-long ceasefire, our teams really did a ceasefire and monitoring. It was a plus, it was an asset on the part of uh, team. It was also needed. What I would like to say, people tell us that we stay there. We continue uh, with our mission. And that is the expectation of all parties concerned. And I'm making this in a very candid observation. And I'm somewhat conveying to you the reality which we are experiencing with the people in different parts of the country. Uh, just to clarify, um, when you're saying that you're waiting for new tasking that has to be decided in Vienna, do you mean the permanent council or the secretariat? 
kind of who has to give you the, these these new tasks? If if it is within our mandate, the task is there. I mean, we will take up the job within our mandate when ceasefire and safety and security. Be sure that we will be helpful to uh, border region security monitoring and other, uh, uh, you know, attempts by the OEC. But this has to be, this has to be uh, also ceasefire has to be declared and ceasefire has to be negotiated, you know. Because you spoke about border uh, crossings and other regions. According to uh, Berlin Declaration, there has to be a mutually acceptable and uh, sustainable ceasefire over there. I'm not saying it as a condition. What I'm saying is our basic requirement is safety and security for my teams. Is it within your current mandate to, to have um, monitors on the border crossings? Or does that require an amendment to the mandate which has to be made by the Permanent Council? My mandate is clear. If there would be something out of the mandate, it has to be discussed here. But at least, uh, what I'm saying, I'm acting within my mandate. And my responsibility is within my mandate. At this stage, I will not speak beyond my mandate. What I would like to say, we are ready to assume two responsibilities. If these responsibilities are out of my mandate, they have to be discussed here. That's what I'm saying. Excuse me one second. So stationing monitors on the border crossings is within the current mandate, is it or is it not? Stationing monitors at border crossings, would that be in the current mandate or not? It if we station monitors at the border crossing, is that within our mandate? Well, it depends very much. You mean the, on the Ukrainian side? Uh, on the Russian side. Uh, the, it depends, you know, it depends. I, I will not pass any judgment on this, but if my mandate is with Ukraine. Um, my current mandate is with Ukraine, and I don't want to make any further judgment. Okay, um, thank you everyone. The ambassador it does have to go to a lunch with participating states, so um, we'll be around still for a while if anyone has any further questions. But thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you to members of the media. And thank you to Kathy and her team for uh, their constant support. Good afternoon.